So yesterday we discussed the SCOTUS ruling on Roe and how they got there, as well as the reaction from groups and individual leaders that we are still in effect counting on to help in the fight to stop the push by Christo fascists against taking civil rights from all marginalized people in this country. Now, as promised um, today, we're going to talk about the options. We're going to talk about what has been discussed so far, what has worked, and, well, I, I think we pretty much covered, you know, what, what isn't going to work, which, of course, is silence and sitting on our hands. Um, this is pieced from several ideas that I have heard about so far. Um, so many names um, involved in this, but we'll, we'll just call it the eight-point plan, right? So, number one, impeach Supreme Court justices. The, ju the justices lied, folks. They lied during the confirmations, and, of course, Clarence Thomas has proven himself time and time again that not only is he a threat to democracy but that he's also working to actively assist his wife, Jeannie Thomas, the insurrectionist, um, by refusing to recuse himself from any cases pertaining to her and, and pertaining to, to January 6th in general. He's compromised. The entirety of the majority on the Dobbs decision is compromised, and Democrats should move to impeach those justices. Number two. Strip the Supreme Court back to original jurisdiction. Remove judicial review. Democrats can attempt to strip the Supreme Court of basically all of their powers, save for original jurisdiction. It's Google it. Um, you know, at least removing judicial review. I mean, no one likes a power grab. It's going to freak them out. So believe it or not, folks, you know, you know long, long time ago, um, or well, what's a better way to describe that? Um, the way the Supreme Court works is that, well, it's mostly known for legislating from the bench, okay? Um, it functions as the highest appellate court currently, um, as, the, as the, the TikTok song signifies, and that's not actually what they're supposed to be doing at all under the Constitution. That's an extra power. Extra power. So... All this talk from constitutional conservatives and, you know, all the hua from the right about abortion not being in the Constitution, the Supreme Court's power to hear this case also is not in the Constitution. The nation's first president, George Washington, um, offered or rather requested, um, you know, way back in 1790, uh, this extra power of judicial review to, to which the court's response back in 1790 was that they weren't interested. Or, or as uh, Kevin Elliott puts it, um, the Supreme Court said, no, nah. um, cut the cord. It'll freak them out. Uh, number three, increase the court's size. Pack the court. By increasing the, uh, the size of the Supreme Court, uh, you know, with justices with a proven track record of preserving human and civil rights, we can effectively, you know, re return dignity to the court and, and assurity to the American people in the process. Now, you'll look back at the Emancipation Proclamation and the executive order that was associated with it were backed by the threat of packing the, the, packing the court. Another, another Google for you. Um, you know, this led to the court backing down uh, from, from cases that were in direct violation of Dred Scott for the Sanford, wherein black people were not allowed and could not ever be um, considered citizens. Um, you know, they figured that one out. Impose a federal law making abortion legal. Democrats can simply attempt to pass federal legislation making abortion legal in all 50 states. This law would ultimately find itself before the Supreme Court, who would, in fact, you know, have to rule on it again. But it would buy some time and, and make for more busy work for the justices on the Supreme Court. It's just another cross to bear, right? Um, every so often, you just write up another bill and, and put it up to a vote on, on, you know, everything that the justices decide 
Um, but, but do the opposite. Um, bog them down in paperwork until they stop showing up for court. Number five, constitutional amendment guaranteeing abortion as a right. Democrats could attempt to pass a constitutional amendment guaranteeing abortion as a constitutional right. This would be similar to passing a federal law, but with teeth. If passed, the, the court would have to then justify finding a constitutional amendment unconstitutional. Which, which is weird and hard and in and of itself is significantly harder to do. And, and to justify than to declare a federal or local, you know, state law unconstitutional because of the requirements in passing an amendment in the first place and because of the powers of the, of the court being dictated by the Constitution itself. That's a weird one. This, this, would, this would be so much busy work for the court. I mean, for justices to figure out how to rule against it. Number six, impose term limits on SCOTUS justices. Democrats could pass a law and or a constitutional amendment to impose term limits or age requirements on justices themselves. Anything under 74 sounds like a good place to start. Um, they could simply pass a law requiring them to rotate out of the Supreme Court to circuit court after a predetermined number of years. Number seven. Convince local prosecutors to not enforce abortion laws. Democrats can reach out to local prosecutors to just not enforce state laws. This, this seems like the easiest and most, most results-driven solution, as we've already heard the other day that a, at least one prosecutor in St. Louis has refused to enforce Missouri's anti-abortion law. Perhaps it's time that our politicians start actually putting their skill set to good use on something besides fundraising. And lastly, number eight, follow the MAGA footsteps and run for office. Hey, if you don't like the way things are done around here, you can just run for office. You. You. Run for office. Seriously, run for office. Any office. I don't care if it's for mayor or city council or dog catcher or local school board. I don't care if you live in a, in a red state in a district that's so red and so gerrymandered that, you know, even Google Ballotpedia can't get the district map right. And no one's run on the Democrat ticket since time immemorial. Because you know what? That person is not only running for office, but is also brazing through, guaranteed, uh, through the primaries with no opponents. And she watches this show. Run for office. Run for office because at the very least, you can be the literal voice of the obviously voiceless. And worst case scenario, if you win, well, that's when the real work can begin. Run for office. Now, I did uh, somehow... I did actually completely forget one of one of my favorites, and these these were a few from uh, Elizabeth Warren about moving basically abortion clinics uh, onto uh, federal lands. Somehow, slipped my mind when I was putting all of this together. But that's also a great idea, so we can change the change this to the nine step plan. It's a fantastic idea, and I'm sure there's some other ones that I missed also. Um, yeah, you know, there's the Mark Twain National Forest right there in Missouri, you know, would really uh, just throw these throw these ass clowns for for a loop is if we put an abortion clinic right in the middle of fucking Shannon County. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, listen, but uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and tag that one on there because that's just brilliant. Um, but listen, I'm sure by now, most of the audience that's still left is scratching their heads and thinking well, that, that 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 that's it, you know. Well, Chainsaw, you said that you were going to offer solutions on what we could do about all this. You had a better idea? Because I would love to hear it. These are literally the only ideas that I've heard that have made any sense to me whatsoever. 
I mean, don't get me wrong, protesting also, there's going to be protests, that's kind of a given. But literally nothing else I've heard isn't just complete as garbage. I've heard, say nothing, what you're supposed to not say, and I've heard, burn it all down. Okay, perhaps you are still subscribing to the sit around and you know, silence and wait for someone to come save us crowd that I had mentioned on yesterday's program. Or even worse, you're subscribing to the nonsense that they subscribe to in the burn it all down crowd that think that burning sage at the police is going to make great changes in our society and somehow put an end to bigotry and poverty and oppression. Here's the thing, folks. No one is coming to save you. And I get that a lot of people out there right now really, really want a Molotov cocktail their way to equality. And that's fun to talk about sometimes. But the very stark reality that we're faced with is this. And this is really, really, really real. No one is coming to save you. I, I'm not coming to save you. I'm, I'm just here for clicks and subs. I don't want you coming to my house. I'm not coming to your house. You know, you can look at my clicks and my subs and, and, and see, you know, how that's been working out for me here. You can scroll through the comments when I say things that people don't like and how I offer an explanation as to why I say the things that I say, you know, and, and that's not to say that I'm not here with you. As I've told folks over the years, I am not interested in being a leader of anything, and I'm willing to admit that. I'm not making money sitting in this office and reading the news to you. I'm not getting paid to do this. I'm not selling books. I'm not asking you to Venmo or cash at me. And in the off time that I do ask you to sub to my channel or support the show on Patreon for as little as $3 a month by going to chainsawccc.com slash join or going to patreon.com slash chainsawccc. The, that information is public, and, you know, I encourage you to just go take a look right now where my subs are and how much money I'm raising on Patreon, okay? Because that's all public. You can see just how much money I'm making or not making by doing this. I'm putting these opinions out here and offering the information that I can when I can because that is the opportunity that I have to give. And I'm doing it in spite of the subs or the clicks or the lack thereof. And I'm not getting paid by anyone to do so. I'm doing it because I feel that people need to know what is actually going on out there. That they may not be aware of, or in this case, what the actual real options are that folks either aren't talking about or worse that folks are telling you not to talk about. And that being said, Karen and Becky from the coffee shop, they aren't going to come and save you either. So if you're waiting on that, they aren't going coming to swoop in and, and, and make everything okay, even, even though they'll pat themselves on the ass and high-five each other all day long for all the hard work they've been doing and you know they will make you feel better about all of your hard work until they have a bad day and then it's back to patronizing people that they claim to want to help or excluding the people that they claim are the most vulnerable because deep down inside they feel that they are the most vulnerable and everything else is just clout chasing call it what it is it's a power grab in order to feel that they, they, that they are the ones that have power or worse, that they can exhibit that power over you. So I urge you to be better than that. Listen, none of these things that I've mentioned individually are a fucking magic bullet to return the civil rights that folks already lost or to prevent even more civil rights from being taken. And yes, there will be protesting and that is necessary. 
all of these things in tandem. All of these individual examples of performative activism working together will work at least to create the energy that's going to be needed to slow the spread of fascism and eventually to restore those lost rights. And it isn't going to happen tomorrow. But it doesn't have to take another 50 years either. The Tea Party. The Tea Party that led to the MAGA movement started well over a decade ago. And it took those steps, these steps, to ultimately bring fascism to our doors. And for them folks who got uteruses, inside of your doors. We know it works. There is no denying that. Because here we are. They didn't have all the tools that we have. A lot of them, but not all of them. They didn't really have a desire or a need to, that, that was popular. Really, they didn't have any mission to do anything. Save for the racist degenerates who, who, who are still permeating their message. And we can accomplish this goal by 2028. But I'm telling you right now that it isn't going to happen as long as folks are still praising and cowering to their saviors and praising the Democrats who cower to Republicans. No one is coming to save you. Run for office.